2.bce by the Saul Good Man Modern uh, Method for Printing. Saul Good Man. Maybe you're ready. Wait, what page is it? Uh, do you want it? Um, it's uh, 64. Yeah, we're going to 9.8. Lencho. Thank you. Let's let's get through this, or will you guys are going to be here after two. Oh no, I'm too. Can I just say one blanket thing? Don't go back and fix mistakes. Don't make facial expressions when you make <laughs> mistakes. Because you guys, this is a performance, yeah, right? Yeah. If you're going to do that in here, you'll do it in your juries. Because it becomes no. something that you normally do. In your lessons, I don't want you to go back when you're playing for me and repeat something. I don't want you to smile or comment on a mistake. Just keep playing. Otherwise, you're training yourself to do that in, in a performance. This is a performance. Mm -hmm. So you're training yourself to do it in a performance by doing it in a performance. Gotcha. And then when you're up in front of the jury committee or you're out doing a music major recital or some of you may play even higher level stuff here or someplace else doing a solo, you know, it's a, it becomes a habit. Just because we're among colleagues and friends doesn't mean it's okay. It's a, it's a bad habit. All right. So. What? Why? Because you went back in the vibe piece. You, you should have kept going. It was one chord. It was the second before the last. But I don't. I, I, I'm a listener in the audience. I don't want to hear you go back and fix your mistakes. I didn't even notice. I didn't. I didn't and that, that's that's the other side of it. A lot of times, you, what's a what is clearly a mistake isn't that noticeable to your audience. They don't necessarily have the music in front of them. They don't necessarily know the piece. So why would you interrupt their the value that they get out of your performance by stopping to fix a mistake? I might as well stop and stand in my head. You know, I might as well stop to scratch my nose. I mean, all of that interrupts the flow of what you're doing and, and, it, and it detracts from their, whatever pleasure or value they get from your performance. Got it. Yeah. It's not about you, it's about your audience. I just wanted to resolve this. It's, a, it's about your audience. <laughs> Comments present. How about, how about from uh, the guy, folk folks that are studying Tiffany, Michael? Uh, just good, yeah, just the, I'm sure you know. We hit the side or something. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, it was good. It was Where what? You hit like the side of the yeah, hit, like the rim. Yeah, well, but sometimes yeah, sometimes that happens. Yeah, whatever. That's, sometimes people hit ropes on keyboards. Yeah, whatever. Rookie mistake. I think when you went from like rolls to like to like sixteenth notes or five notes, I couldn't tell the difference if he was trying to roll or if he was trying to do like rhythm. What do you What do you think is causing that? Maybe. What would you suggest as a as a way of improving that? So you don't fall in the same situation when you're doing different playing. His, his roll speed was almost the same speed as like his rhythm speed. So should his roll speed be slower, faster? I think faster. Depends on the dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I thought it was pretty slow good. down my rolls. Let me let me ask you this, Eduardo. He's got rolls at different dynamic levels. If all of them sound like sixteenth notes. Does that suggest uh, that maybe he's he's playing the same speed on all of his rolls, and or too close to the same speed on all his rolls? I mean, is that maybe where what you're hearing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes or no? I think that's what you're hearing. I, I'm asking you because I mean, the, to me, those it could be you're you're trying to roll too fast consistently. You may be varying it, but you're rolling too fast or too slow. Yeah. Or you're just not varying it. To me, those are two different problems. Yeah, right? it varies according to the dynamic. 
but you could you could still you could you can vary according to the dynamic and still roll too fast or still roll too slow. Yeah. That's versus just not varying at all. Those are two different problems. Yeah. Well, because I have those those short like FPs, it's like. Mm. Mm. So. Something. Listen, you got the video though for reference. Yep. So, uh, uh, Rick, what about just basic sound and stroke? We've been emphasizing that a lot in your last. Oh, I wasn't looking at him. I was looking at the music. Yeah, but when you use your ear, uh, it sounded right. Sounded <laughs> right. Uh, what does that mean? I don't. I don't know. I was. I was concentrated on the rhythm. I, I thought it was good. Really I, was I looked at him and he was doing the this thing. Yeah, where, where yeah. He, he was pulling back. Well, or you mean the upstroke? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. It was very upstroke. Yeah, it's not as much as it needs to be all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You know, there, there are a lot of you guys. Points. Yeah. This is this is I, I have a couple of you in here that I hound about this, you know. I strike and then I don't come back right away with my stroke. I stay down until the next stroke. That's not an appropriate Tiffany stroke. Yeah. This is an appropriate Tiffany stroke. And some of you still are you know, some people are still I mean, and I, you, I I I'll be honest, that's a that's a typical issue for lots of students to get that recovery because it seems very different than what you do on other drums. And it is. But you have to do it if you're going to make the drum sound. I think it's harder with faster rhythms. Right? Yeah, it is. But your stroke then should be smaller. You should be using your wrist. But that doesn't mean you should change the fact that there's a big recovery when you play loud with the, the elbows or medium or soft with the wrist. It should still be an up and down stroke that are balanced, not a down stroke that waits to recover. Yeah. It's really about the timing of the recovery. If you do the recovery right after you strike, so it's balanced with the initial down, up down stroke. Then the upstroke and downstroke are, are you know very different than if you leave it down there and then pick it up to prepare the next stroke. Yeah. You leave it down until you're going to strike again. That that that, that makes the sound of the drums very different. It does on keyboards too, but it's yeah. worse on timpani because it's much more resonant instrument. Okay, who's next? <laughs>